Welcome to our service for the third Sunday of Easter. It is wonderful to be with you and to worship with you as we come together, wherever we are and whenever we turn to worship God. We can always be assured that he is there waiting to receive our praise, to hear our petition and to come to us in spiritual communion. So let's just take a moment in the quiet as we prepare ourselves to be in God's presence. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. We sing our first hymn now, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. So let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor. 
but she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we, and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. And the Collect for the third Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now hear our epistle reading, after which we will sing again, Amazing Grace. Ninth chapter of Acts, beginning at the first verse. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether man or woman, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but could not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and he did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple called Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias? Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus called Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all of the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call in on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent to me to you so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptised and after taking some food he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them, and though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, You used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so let's join together in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end and i believe in the holy ghost the lord the giver of life who proceedeth from the father and the son 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hand over now to Chris, who will open God's word with us. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your written word. And as we think on these things, open our hearts and minds to hear your word to us today. Isn't Easter over and done with? Didn't we celebrate the resurrection two weeks ago? We heard the story, sang the glorious resurrection music, ate chocolate eggs and possibly enjoyed a delicious meal with family and friends. We all know that Jesus died and that he's now risen, so isn't it time to move on? In our culture, we typically do just that. We plan and prepare for an event and then once it's accomplished, we put it behind us and look to the next thing. We are efficient and productive with our time and our energy. But once again, our busy schedules tend to conflict with our life of faith. The church recognises this and tries to slow us down. A liturgical calendar calls for an entire season of Easter, not just one day. There are seven Sundays of Easter. We're officially celebrating Easter up until the day of Pentecost, which this year falls on the 5th of June. Why is this important? We tend to miss things because we're so quick to move on from one thing to another. We have the great luxury of hindsight to look at the Easter story, but those first followers of Jesus did not. They had to struggle with their raw emotions as the events of that week in Jerusalem continued to unfold. Our scriptures tell us how they responded to all that was going on before and after the death of Jesus. When life gets difficult, when we become lost, confused and afraid, when the changes of life are not what we want or think we deserve, some of us tend to run away. We try to go back to the way it was before, to something safe, something familiar, our comfort zone. Often we revert to old patterns of behaviour and thinking. Even when we know better and we do not want to go backwards, it seems easier than moving forward. In our Gospel reading today, Peter and six others have returned to the sea. They have left Jerusalem. They've come home to the Sea of Tiberias, the place where it all began. Discipleship, the upper room, the cross, the empty tomb. The house with its locked doors are some 80 miles to the south. Peter now decides to go fishing. He knows how to do that. It's familiar and comfortable. Perhaps it takes him back to life before Jesus and the others are quick to join him. My feeling, however, is that Peter is not really trying to catch fish as much as he is fishing for answers. We can leave the places and even the people of our life, but we can never escape ourselves or our life. Wherever you go, there you are. Peter may have left Jerusalem, but he cannot get away from three years of discipleship, the Last Supper, the arrest, a charcoal fire, denials, a crowing rooster. He cannot leave behind the cross, the empty tomb, the house with its locked doors tight, the echoes of peace be with you. So he fishes. Peter fishes for answers. What have I done? What were those three years about? Who was Jesus? Where is he? Who am I? What will I do now? Where will I go? What will happen to me? Peter is searching for meaning, a way forward, a place in life. Peter is fishing in a dark time in his life. We've all spent time fishing in a dark time, asking the same questions as Peter. 
looking for our place in life, seeking peace and some sense of understanding and meaning. More often than not, this happens in the context of the failures, losses and sorrows of our lives. It happens when we come face to face with the things we've done and left undone. We've all been there, fishing for answers in the darkness. Friends, you have no fish, have you? Jesus says. This is more a statement of fact than a question. Jesus is not asking for a fishing report. He's commenting on the reality and emptiness of Peter's and the other disciples' lives. Peter is living in the pain and the past of Good Friday. He's fishing on the Good Friday side of the boat and the net is empty. There are no fish, no answers, no way forward. The nets of a dark time, fishing, can contain nothing to feed or nourish life. Was Peter fishing on the wrong side of the boat? Jesus seems to think so. Cast your net to the right side of the boat, Jesus says, the resurrection side of the boat. This movement of the net from one side of the boat to the other symbolises the disciples' resurrection. It is the great Passover. Jesus calls us to move out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. In so doing, we see and proclaim, it is the Lord. And emptiness gives way to the abundance of a net full of fish, large ones, 153 of them. Darkness dawns, a new day with new light. A new charcoal fire kindles hospitality in place of the cold ashes of rejection. The Last Supper has become the first breakfast. Confessions of love overcome denials of fear. It is the Lord. A dark time of fishing is over. This is Easter. Good Friday is real. Pain, death, sin, a reality of life. But the greater and final reality is Easter resurrection. Follow me, Jesus says and live as resurrected people. Follow me and fish in a different place. Follow me. Follow me is the invitation to examine where we have been fishing. On which side of the boat do we fish? On which side of the cross do we live? Good Friday or Easter resurrection? Amen. And as we pray today, let's hold on our hearts all those concerns of the world, either locally, nationally or internationally, which seem to, to be situations where God's light and God's love is so distant. And let us ask God that through his grace and his love, that healing and peace can be restored. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, 
that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good example that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only Mediator and Advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith, and prepare to meet with God in spiritual communion, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we, from time to time, most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. So after hearing those wonderful promises, we prepare ourselves to receive Christ once more 
in our service of spiritual communion. We hear again the words from Psalm 139 and Revelation chapter 3. Whither shall I go from your spirit? Or whither shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. And so we say together, Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body with the earnest wish that they may always be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate thee from me. May I live and die in thy love. Amen. So as we sit and receive Christ, we hear the words, Jesus calls us. So let's pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this spiritual communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. We sing once again, I the Lord of sea and sky.
And so let's continue to praise God as we pray together. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We move now to our notices. So welcome to our notices for this week. Behind me you will see a picture of something that I would imagine is very familiar, a cup of tea. And that's because this week is our national time for a cup a week. And so I wonder whether you can make time for a cuppa with somebody. Or whether you would like somebody to make time for a cuppa with you. It is an invitation to our places of welcome, of course, on Wednesdays at Holy Trinity Rockwoodine Wood and Holy Trinity Oaken Gates between 12 and 2 and at St Peter's Prizley between 1 and 3 on a Thursday. Please do come along, share a cuppa. It doesn't have to be tea, it can be coffee, it can be a cold drink, and there's usually soup and um, cake and lots of people to say hello to and to just share that time together. Our APCMs are coming up. Um, 1st of May, which is this Sunday, is at St Peter's at 9am. Um, the 15th of May is at Rockwood Ironwood at 11am. And the 22nd of May at Holy Trinity Oaken Gates at 9.30am. You are more than welcome to come along to those services as we hear what's happened and as we look forward to what will come in our churches in the future. Also starting this coming week on Tuesday is Reading Luke and um, that is an invitation for anybody to come along to Holy Trinity Rockwoodine Woods 7 o'clock in the evening on Tuesdays to read a chapter of Luke together and to discuss what surprised us, what we've noticed for the first time, what we've always known to be there and um, how it affects us in our daily lives. Um, so please do consider coming along. It will be great to have you with us. There's no need to book. The urn will be on. There will be a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. There'll be cake and there'll be biscuits and there'll be friendly people to chat a few, chat, through Luke together. Coming up next week um, is our confirmation services. We are really blessed to have a large number of young people being confirmed this year. And the service that you can join in with if you wish is on site at Holy Trinity Oaken Gates on the 8th of May at 4 p.m. Um, so if you want to come along and support our young people, then that is the service that you are warmly invited to. All the other services are happening in schools. We have a baptism coming up this week, and so please do pray for Riley and for his parents and his godparents. And do also remember those families who are grieving in your prayers this week. And they will be the families of Rita Windsor. Violet Lamp, Barbara Grandfield and Keith Perry. Stay safe, have a great week, enjoy that cup of tea wherever you drink it. 
God bless. So as we draw to the end of our BCP service for the third Sunday of Easter, I pray that you would remain safe and I look forward to worshipping with you again soon. For now, a final blessing, after which we will sing, Thine be the glory. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love today, this week and always.